Hello, and welcome to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. Specifically, today we are doing a review, a review of this knife, by W.R. Case and Sons Cutlery. So, let's try to burn through this as quick as we possibly can. First of all, what is it? Well, it is a W.R. Case and Sons Cutlery Trapper in Amber Bone with Chrome Vanadium Blades. This is the full-size trapper. Let's get out our ruler here so we can talk about dimensions. Get this in camera if possible. We have a knife that is about four and an eighth inches long when closed. The main blade is a California clip point, called a California clip because of this long clip we have here. Again, like I said, in chrome vanadium steel which is a high carbon steel. I'm not gonna be able to see it from that direction. High carbon steel, which is not corrosion resistant, so it will rust if you're not careful. From tang to tip, we've got just a little under three inches. That's about two and seven eighths for the main clip point blade. Secondary blade is a spay blade named traditionally because it was used to castrate farm animals supposedly it's also supposed to be good as a skinning knife because it does not have a sharp point um, i would assume that most modern suburban users are not going to be skinning anything but i have heard people using these to uh, skin squirrels and such if they do hunting which i do not do length on this tang to tip is just maybe a sixteenth over oh wait a minute Okay, that's the same. Two and seven eighths. So, we've got four and an eighth closed, which is fairly long for a traditional folder, but still pocketable. Handle material covers cow shin bone. This nice jigging pattern here, if my camera will focus. There we are. Case does a good job on these jigging patterns. Very nice. That's in the amber bone, so it's dyed cow shin bone, it's supposed to resemble staghorn, which is another traditional knife handle material. We've got nickel silver bolsters, we've got brass liners, we've got, uh, I believe the back springs are made out of the same chrome vanadium steel, so these also will patina after a while. You can see my main blades have quite the patina on them already. I've been carrying this knife for a couple weeks. So, how much was this knife? I got this off of Amazon.com, and currently I think you can order it for $43.05. The thing with that is that it ships sight unseen. You're just ordering this knife, you can't really take a look at them beforehand. Um, there are a lot of places online, um, I know like Knife Ships Free, CollectiveKnives.com, where they will picture each individual knife so you can pick out the exact one that you want. Not so on Amazon, obviously. So, 4305, not bad. Packaging comes in this. Very basic. Just a little cardboard box. We can see here the numbering system for case knives. Focus, please. There we go. Six is the handle material, bone. 25, or no, two is the number of blades, two. 54 is the pattern number, which is the trapper. CV denotes chrome vanadium for the steel. One thing that I don't like about case knives is they have a lot of cool handle materials, a lot of cool kind of special edition knives, but they don't really offer any of them in chrome vanadium. They only offer those in stainless steel, and I think the reason being that they assume most people are going to take those knives and use them as just collector knives. They're just going to put them away, they might take them out and look at them longingly every once in a while, and they figure that the chrome vanadium are ones that people are actually going to use, especially the old school guys who enjoy the old school steel. So they only offer them in a few. I think they have chestnut bone. They have the amber bone. I think they might have just plain red bone. Um, and then the yellow Delrin synthetic um, covers. But that's pretty much all they offer in the chrome vanadium which is kind of irritating. I like some of the other pocket worn and some of the other colors that they have, but I also like the chrome vanadium blades and basically you're, you're kind of limited in terms of that. Um, if you open up the packaging, 
We have ugh, tissue paper, which the knife came in. Very delicate, doesn't really hold up. It was already ripped when I opened the knife. And then we've got product quality information, which just pretty much has what you would expect. This is in Espanol. Uh, Japanese. Francais. There we go. English. So there's just, you know, proper knife use, safety. This is kind of funny. They talk about the case edge. Um, the case name has always been synonymous with extraordinarily keen edges. Well, not in this case. When I got this knife, it would not cut paper. Probably would hardly even cut butter. It was insanely dull. And the spade blade was a little better than the clip point, but even the spade blade was just ridiculously dull. And from what I could tell, the edge was set up in maybe a 15 degree bevel. And so I reprofiled it to 20 degrees. And I'm no knife expert, knife freak, knife weirdo. Um, but I have a Spider Co. triangle sharp maker, so it's decent at maintaining the edge of a knife. Not great at reprofiling, but anyway, I used it, reprofiled it to about 20 degrees, and now have a very nice edge on both of these blades. You can see, nice polished edge. This one. I've gotten quite a bit of use out of, so it's probably not as sharp. It probably needs to be touched up a little bit. The spade blade I keep ridiculously sharp because I don't use it very often, but this will shave still. Nice build quality. Well, um, not bad at all, actually. People have said in recent years the case isn't quite up to snuff, um, not as good as they were in the 60s, 70s, 80s. But then other people have said that maybe in the last couple years they've gotten a little better. And this knife was made in 2014. If you can look at the Tang stamp there, uh, focus in please. You can see the X's, there's a series of X's and dots. And what happens is every 10 years they kind of start over again. So you'll see there would be five dots. Uh, well, there would be five. There would be an X, a dot, an X, a dot, an X, and then down here, a dot, an X, a dot, an X, a dot. Um, so they start taking away the dots for every year. So there's two, three, four dots taken away. So you take that and add that to the 2010. Each decade, they have a new style for the case logo. So this is the logo style for 2010. So basically, you know from this stamp that this knife was made in 2014. So this is a brand new knife which I purchased sight unseen, build quality, pretty good. Nice and flush on the bolsters to the covers on either side. These brass pins are nice and flush. The only major issue, um, you can see on this clip point blade, the centering isn't great. And there's a little bit of rub. Um, you can kind of see there's some scrapes there. Maybe you can't see. Tiny bit of blade and rub, not a big deal. Um, and then also there are gaps on this back spring, just a little bit right there. Maybe you can see it if I shine this through. Yeah, you see that? Gaps! Again, that doesn't affect functionality at all. It's just something that I guess the uh, real hardcore traditional knife collectors would look at that as a sign of not the greatest quality. But hey, this costs $43, so I'm not really that worried about it. It works fine. Um, what else? One thing I'm not a huge fan of is the point of this blade. Not tremendously sharp. It's kind of rounded off. And you'll also see just uh, around the tang focus. Every edge is kind of soft and rounded. Come on, buddy. Focus in, my friend. Focus. You're not going to focus. All right. And that is a result of the fact that these blades are stamped out, and they're ground, and then they're thrown in a giant vat with polishing media, and a bunch of blades together are just kind of tumbled around in this vat. And that gives them a nice polish, but it also rounds, rounds down all the edges. 
Not a huge deal. I'm not going to be stabbing anything with this. So we have covered what it is. We've covered how much it is. We've covered the quality of it. Um, functionality, I've been enjoying this. I've been enjoying using this. I've been using this for work. Um, like I said, it's a little long. I probably wouldn't carry this around, you know, in my civvies, uh, so to speak, because I wear tight pants. And four and an eighth is a little long for that, and it has a tendency, even if you put it this way into your pocket, it has a tendency to kind of work down this way. And so it can be a little obtrusive. It's not tremendously heavy, but you know, you know it's there. Uh, with my work pants, it's not as big of a deal. I have more voluminous pockets. Um, now that I've sharpened the blades, I've gotten a lot of utility out of them. I use this just for any task at work in which I need to cut something. I'm using baling, uh, twine, I've been cutting, uh, I don't know, zip ties, sharpening pencils, all sorts of things with this. And like I said, the spay blade I pretty much keep as a backup, which will be really sharp whenever I need something really, really sharp. So on a whole, um, I'm quite pleased with this. For buying something sight unseen, not being able to check it out beforehand, I think the quality is not bad at all. Value for money, $43 for a made in America knife, which is, uh, I think, a thing of beauty. I really like it a lot. I think it's worth the money. I think that, you know, even if I just got lucky and got a fairly good example, and like I said, there are a few little things, the gaps and stuff. Um, from what I can tell, I mean, my older brother just bought one sight unseen as well, and his was as nice, if not nicer, than mine. So I don't know, maybe Case has kind of stepped things up recently. Maybe their quality control is better than it was in uh, the past. And I would highly recommend a WR Case & Sons Cutlery Knife in this pattern. The Trapper is my favorite. Thanks for watching.